I'm here at the beautiful Estadio Metro Station in Medellin, Colombia to introduce you to the first installment of Destinations with Donnie. We have today Christine Folsom, the director, along with Anjanu Ellis, Oscar-nominated Anjanu Ellis, to talk to us about Fannie Lou Hamer. It's a project that Chromatic Black sponsored and made sure that the history of this freedom fighter was available to all. It's a short film but it's a project that deserves your attention and much more time. Take a listen and let us know what you think. I would love for Anjani to talk about um, her passion for telling the Fannie Lou Hamer story and the genesis thereof and, and, and where, we, where she is now with, with that uh, passion project. Well, I, um, I, moved back to Mississippi. I was raised in Mississippi, but I moved back to Mississippi about 10 years ago um, to take care of a family member. And um, it just really ordered my steps in a way that had not been before. I was just immersed in this, this world of the Confederacy again. And as opposed to experiencing that as, as a self-involved teenager or self-involved college student, um, I, had, I had a different eye on it now. I had a different experience. And, and so my, my fists were raised every day. And in, this, in that journey, um, I just started all of this stuff that I knew about just became really active in my life. And so that a part of that was my knowledge and awareness of Fannie Lou Hamer, of Mrs. Hamer. So I said, you know, what can I do? If it's not happening in the classroom, I certainly didn't learn anything about her when I was in elementary school, when I was in junior high school, when I was in high school. What can I do in what I do to, to change that as some course correction? And so I wanted to do a film about her I reached out to some writers, reached out to some directors, reached out to everybody, and nobody wanted to do it. So I said, well, I gotta do it myself. So I started writing something about Mrs. Hamer. And, and then Christine, who I worked with um, on the Clark Sisters movie that was on Lifetime and came out in 2020, and that was such a great experience. And we really have become collaborators in, 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 in a very real way. And so she and I started talking and then, you know, she, she got the passion too, you know? And so, so we started talking last summer about doing something that really was the idea essentially was being a proof of concept of what we would do if, it, if we are to make this into a film. So Christine being the person that she is, uh, so, you know, start applied for a grant because I just, I just don't think that these things can happen, but she does. And she applied for the grant and they gave us the grant, $10,000. So she came, Chromatic Black did that. So she came to Chicago uh, where I was working in October and that weekend we filmed, we filmed the short. And so now it's out in the world and, um, it's, it, it's really an introduction to what I have been working on and writing, which is, which is the full feature on, on, on uh, Mrs. Hamer that we hope to make happen. Excellent. So Christine, I see a smile there. Tell me what you're thinking as you hear Anjanu speaking about this. Well, it's always interesting to hear the origin story of anything, but as I'm listening to Anjanu, it's like um, I see a lot of progress that has been made, have some ways to go in terms of um, setting this project up, but just in terms of her starting out writing it. And I think Anjani just completed a, a very sublime next draft. And I, it just keeps getting better because I'm like, you don't need to do anything. It's good. We can shoot this. Let's go. You know, but she's just so like um, dogged in, in, in making sure that uh, 
it pops on the page and and I just feel like it's it's really turning into something that um, Mrs. Hamer um, will be very proud of and 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 would would see that somehow she implanted an ingenue living in Mississippi and beyond is is I feel it starting to sprout. So for those who aren't aware, because clearly, first of all, the story really touched your heart, Anjanu, and I'm assuming that's why you were so passionate about bringing it to life. But for those who aren't aware, what is it that they should know about Fannie Lou Hamer? Well, it's so funny. I, I take for granted that everybody knows about Mrs. Hamer. And the reality is, is that most people don't know about Mrs. Hamer. Uh, when I started my research a couple of years ago, I was in Atlanta and I uh, went to Barnes and Noble and I, and I went to, you know, one of the, one of the, um, you know, salespersons there. And I said, yeah, do you have a book about, I'm looking for a book about Mrs. Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer. And they said, who is he? <laughs> I, was, I was, I was like, what? And then, but it was very sobering for me. And it said to me, I, I need, I got a job to do. I have a job to do. What's important to know about Mrs. Hamer is that, you know, the, 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 the world of the freedom rights movement and the civil rights movement, because they are two really very different things. We only have, you know, scraped the edge of that. Um, and we've only scraped the edge of that because of who gets to tell the stories unfortunately. Um, and so Mrs. Hamer is really a casualty of that. And what's important that people know at this moment right now about Mrs. Hamer is that, okay, so Congress is dealing with this John Lewis Voting Rights Act, right? So in 1964, Mrs. Hamer and the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, and they were just a bunch of, you know, maids and farmers and sharecroppers from Mississippi did not have a pot to piss in, literally. They got on a bus and they went to New Jersey, the Democratic National Convention in New Jersey, because Mississippi, as Mississippi has done and did, sent an all white, all male delegation to be the representatives for the state of Mississippi in the 1964 Democratic National Convention, not Republican, Democratic National Convention. And so Mrs. Hamer and this motley crew of folks from Mississippi said, no, they don't represent us. So they went to New Jersey and they said, these people don't represent us. So we need to be the ones who are seated. We are the true representatives for the state of Mississippi. And what ha happened was, is that it put the whole convention into a turmoil. Lyndon Johnson, um, felt his presidency was threatened by Mrs. Hamer, by the efforts of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. And that's all I'm gonna tell you because I want people to actually research this and find out for themselves. But the consequence of what they did meant that the Democratic Party would no longer allow all male delegations to, to go to the convention anymore. And they would not allow all white delegations to go to the convention anymore. So. Here's the thing, we live what this woman did in 1964, and the consequences and the ramifications of her efforts are, 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 the, are, are what we are experiencing right now. So that's just a little bit of it. No, I love it. And see, your passion just came through as you spoke about that. And I think it is such an important story that people know, and that's why uh, earlier as we were talking, I think it's such an important story for Black History Month especially, right? This is something that a lot of people are not aware of. And as you mentioned, it affects us every day um, in our daily lives today. So Christine, um, when you hear Anjanu speaking about that, how did that affect you? Is, is that the same passion that you felt when you two discussed um, creating this project? Well, um, one of the things that we, Anjan and I discuss about this project and, and how it's lensed and how it's told is that it could be one of the few civil rights story told through a female lens. So we have had 
a plethora of movies about the civil rights movement, civil rights heroes. So typically they're either told um, through the, the lens of the, the male protagonists or um, through the other lens of a male director, or you could have a female director and still a male protagonist. Um, this, this may be um, really one of the first feature films made that is strictly told through the lens of this black woman written by uh, a Mississippi native, um, Anjanou Ellis, um, directed by um, a, a black woman who, with deep roots in Mississippi. All of my dad's side of the family is from Mississippi. And one of the things I was thinking, Anjanou, like, is that I'm probably one of the few directors who, who actually own property in Mississippi. How rare is that? And, and how that property came to me was through generations of, um, of family members who started out in Mississippi. And, and it started out with my great-great-grandfather owning 150 acres of land. And over time, it just got passed down to my aunts and uncles. And what happened was um, white land owners started to buy the properties away from my family members who thought at the time whatever they were being offered was a lot of money. And so that yeah. 150 acres trickled down to 10 acres of I, and then I, I think often about what it took my great great grandfather to accumulate that land and keep it in, in, in his family for four generations all the way down to me. So I think about the legacy of, of my relatives and um, what, what they went through while in Mississippi and, and then a lot of them migrated to Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Louis, Cleveland. And, and, and like me, I'm a casualty of, of those relatives from Mississippi. So every summer I had to go to Mississippi so they can visit all their relatives. So there's a deep connection that I've always had to Mississippi and I didn't know what that was and what that would, would mean. But this is what I, then meeting Anjanu, like I was just really impressed that she lives in Mississippi um, now and um, her groundedness to it, just, I tell Anjanou, like, she feels like family to me because there are so many connections that we have because of the roots of our, our relatives. I love it. So um, my last question for you, and then after that, if there's anything else that we haven't touched on that you would like to add, um, you mentioned a full feature. So where to from here? We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. We're trying to uh, we're trying to get uh, people, advocates, um, you know, producers, to help us, um, you know, bring it bring it um, to make it happen to to realize it. So you know, we thank you for for wanting to feature us because all of this helps. All of it helps. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. And that was the point on our end. We, I, I think it's a very timely story, and it needs to be out there. Because as we discussed, not too many people know of Fannie Lou Hamer, but they should. They should. Yeah, I want to just say this really, just real quickly. You know, it's interesting that the, the words we use, we use words like story and narrative, right? And, you know, what's, I'm, I've been thinking about that a lot, and, 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 those words have value, of course, but they're not really reflective of what I feel is important, and that is that it's the truth. Because it's because you can attach words like story and narrative can be easily attached with fiction, you know, and and that's not that's not that's not the the the, the what happened with Mrs. Hamer. Who, Ms. Hamer, who Mrs. Hamer is and her effect on, on American electoral politics is not a story, it's not a narrative, it's the truth. And I the think truth. it's important to say that because of this, you know, this active conversation, this really real battle that we're having right now surrounding critical race theory. And, um, you know, Christine sent me a video that we were, there was legislation about critical race theory in Mississippi. 
and you know the legislation was that it would be banned out of Mississippi classrooms and the black legislators um, when there was a vote on the bill they all walked out so you know really critical race theory what people think critical race theory what it's being sold as critical race theory isn't really what critical race theory is but the bottom line is what they don't want is they don't want this history that they are ashamed that they are ashamed of to be told and to be taught in classrooms so that's what is so important about about Mrs. Hamer's, uh, what happened with Mrs. Hamer, the truth of Mrs. Hamer, and I, I, I just really want to make sure that I put that that word in there, that it's it's the truth, it's the facts, it's history. I like that, I like that. All right then, well you guys, I have to run, but thank you so much yes. for doing this, okay? Thank you so much.